So this is my family. Um, I've got my grandparents, my parents, and my aunt and uncle, and they each met their spouse when they were 15 years old and are still married to this day, with the exception my grandparents are now passed away. Um, my parents just celebrated their 50th anniversary, my aunt and uncle 58 years. So when I was 15, you can imagine there was a lot of pressure you know, to find my soulmate, and I don't know why I was still single. I mean, look at those overalls. Um, but it was the first time that I realized I might die alone. And 15 came and went. And when I was 16, I met somebody. He was the soccer star. I was a nerd. It was the she's all that situation. And I thought, like, I have to marry him or I will die alone. And so I didn't know better. And five and a half years and an engagement later, thank God it did not work out. Um, but you can see that there was my former life. And then there's my later adulthood, which most of it has been spent single. So if any of you have tried dating in Rhode Island, you know it's really fun. Um, so I do have to throw a shout out to the guys in Rhode Island who are not them. And um, I did meet some really wonderful people who are still, you know, friends of mine, but it didn't work out, unfortunately. Um, so during my singlehood, I was told my standards are too high. And I mean, I was just looking for Gerard Butler, like, P.S. I love you. Um, and, you know, Scottish, ideally. So I went to Scotland. It was my first solo travel experience looking for Gerard Butler, which is not something you should say at customs, as I learned. Um, and then in 2015, I went to Greece, and that changed my life because I loved the culture, the people, the food, the language, and so I needed to amend what I was looking for. So before it was Gerard Butler, P.S. I love you. And then after Greece, it was Gerard Butler, do you know where I'm going? 300. Um, <laughs> and then Greek. Ideally. Um, and so I didn't think this was too much to ask. Um, and I, at one point, uh, heard someone speaking Greek at a coffee shop in Rhode Island, and I went over to them, and we ended up going on a date. None of the Greek people that I screened, um, we did go out, but it didn't work out. Something was missing. But I tried all the things. I did the dating apps. Um, I met people the old-fashioned way. I, every time I went traveling, I was like, is, is he going to be the one sitting next to me on the airplane? Never was. I even put a note on a stranger's car because I saw a Greek flag on the bumper sticker. We went out to coffee, but it turned out he was engaged. Um, and then I took the global scavenger hunt, which I mentioned in my last Pachaka Cha. And I learned, one, my soulmate is not my partner. But two, when I think about getting married, sorry, um, I want a partner who's going to be able to have the same goals as I do and the same drive and the same vision. So I had to amend my list. And I was like, oh, I guess Christian should be on there because my faith is the most important thing in my life. Um, Greek, ideally, and single, as that turned out to be an important uh, element of my relationship. And uh, Christian, Greek, and single, it took three years, and I found one person. And that happened in 2020. And I was like, this is it. This is the person I'm going to marry. And then five months later, they broke up with me. And I was like, OK, this is not the person I'm going to marry. So I went into a despair. My 15-year-old self came back. And I was like, I'm going to die alone. So I considered you know, the obvious options. And I was like, OK. What, how old do you have to be to enter a convent? Like 60? I don't know. Um, and then somebody suggested that I make a list of the things that I'm looking for in a man. So I was like, I had three things. Took three years to find one person, but OK. So I took a two-page list. Um, Loves God, most important. Um, seminarian, why not? Half Greek, half Scottish, the best of Gerard. Um, you know, dark eyes, blue hair, or blue hair, blue eyes, dark hair. Um, and basically, uh, likes the show Friends, two pages of nonsense, but also very important to me. And then a month later, I was on Facebook. As you do, I fell down the rabbit hole. And I found somebody that I was like, I kind of like this person. He had a Greek name. He graduated from seminary. He was married, so he didn't count. But I was like, how do I find someone like him? Because he's like the person. So I went through all 1,500 of his friends on Facebook, just scrolling through and pulling aside the people that I was like, well, seminarian, my age, no women in the photo. And after. <laughs> 
1,500 people, there were four eligible prospects. So I did the logical thing and sent them friend requests. And all of them accepted my friend request, but only one of them, Rob, sent me a message. And I was like, okay, uh, Rob is not a Greek name, but I'll go with it. Um, and so we started some banter, and uh, pretty early on, he threw in a meme from friends. Not this meme, but I was like, I'm intrigued. And then he invited me to his Orthodoxy 101 Zoom class, and I was like, okay. And I attended, and it turned out to be really great. And he was very charming. Um, and so the thing that takes the cake is not that my like quasi-dating app Facebook stalking worked, um, and that I met someone who was actually single, um, and that I liked him and he liked me. But after our first virtual brunch date, because he lives in Orlando, um, I found out that he's half Greek, half Scottish, with blue eyes, dark hair. Uh, he not only fit everything that was on that two-page crazy list, but he also fulfilled all of my 15-year-old fantasies that I didn't think to put on the list. Um, and what I want to share with you from this crazy story is that even after 20 years of thinking you might die alone, it is still possible to find your person and it's worth the wait. Wow. Thank you. Woo!